Good afternoon, Holy Rosary. Please be seated for a moment. What joyful occasions are we celebrating this week? One that we just completed was 14 of our teenagers received the Sacrament of Confirmation today at one o'clock, so, uh, and they were very, very good. I was very impressed with them. So we gotta hear it for our teenagers anyway. Any other joyful occasions, birthdays, anniversaries, births, baptisms, anything that you're doing? Yes, go ahead. Birthday. How many years? 66. 66. Congratulations. <laughs> Just like the highway. Anybody else? Yes, go ahead. Got engaged at 12 o'clock. Oh, that's wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> Anybody else? Birthdays, anniversaries, celebrations in your family? Yes, go ahead, Rita. 71. Happy birthday. Very good. Did I miss anybody? Oh, go ahead, Marie. I had a birthday this past week. How old? 65. 65. <laughs> Time for Medicare. All right, anybody have special prayers or special intentions they need us to remember at this Mass? Looking around, anybody here and over there? Am I missing somebody? Okay, stand up so I can hear you. Go ahead. Charlie, for our parishioner who was, Charlie was uh, hit by a car out front of the church after the 930 Mass. He was hit by one car, threw it in the air, came down and on the windshield of another car. And, but Charlie is doing pretty good. He does have fractures to his tibia and fibula, and he had a tear in his aorta. But the biggest problem was he couldn't have surgery because there was some swelling in his brain from the, you know, the impact injury. But he's doing much better. So keep Charlie in your prayers. And for the person who was a hit and run, that they would own up to what they did. So that would be helpful for him and his family. Anybody else, special prayers? All right, let us stand together. Ow. And we give glory to God as we bless in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. We pause now to ask God's mercy. Lord, you were sent by the Father to bring good news to the poor. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you came to save us from sin. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you were sent to proclaim the grace and mercy of God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us bow our heads to pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers fly the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting, 
The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians concerning times and seasons brothers and sisters you have no need for anything to be written to you for yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night when people are saying peace and security then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as to the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
of everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sisters and brothers, the Lord is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called to in his servants and, trust, and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who had received five went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received the one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest upon my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. There is an old story about two farmers who are visiting each other over the fence in the middle of their property. And Jake, the first one, asked, so what are you going to plant this year, corn? Nope, Elmer replied, scared of those corn borers. Well, what about potatoes, his neighbor asked. Nope, too much danger of potato bugs announced Elmer. The neighbor pressed on, well then, what are you going to plant? Elmer answered, nothing. I'm going to play it safe this year. Yes. Playing it safe, no crops at all. In today's gospel, Jesus tells the story of a lazy servant just like Elmer who buried his talent instead of doing business with it. More often than not, 
do we realize that the talents we possess are not a matter of skills or resources, but opportunities. The opportunities we have to make something good happen, to bring a measure of healing to a situation, to a broken heart or a spirit, to contribute our few minutes or our few dollars in order to make a difference in someone's life. Whatever our skills and resources enable us to do, the challenge of the gospel is to be ready and willing to respond to the opportunities we have to give joyfully and generously for the sake of God's kingdom. You know, if you read about those who were great adventure takers, who took voyages in life, it will say something to us about us who are pilgrims on the journey that the Lord has set us out upon. Columbus, for instance, he trusted his maps and calculations, considered his risks, and sailed off to India only to encounter a new world. Magellan based his charts and maps on the most current information that was available to him in his day and boldly circumnavigated the globe. A few centuries later, in their search for a Northwest Passage, Lewis and Clark set off across the entire North American content, continent and explored the nation. Now, all these explorers had at least one thing in common. They all based their momentous journeys on maps that were mostly inaccurate, hopelessly flawed, and vastly mistaken. Yet, each of these adventurers went ahead, accepted the risks, plunged into unknown, uncharted course that was mapped for them and changed the world. It is precisely because of their risk-taking that the face of the planet was redrawn and the dreams of future generations were reshaped. Those without the vision, without the courage to take risks, are quick to label others crazy, crackpots, fools, and failures. But in the parable of the talents this Sunday, Jesus gives a stern warning. Discipleship does not promise complete safety. Discipleship requires that you take a risk. So on the contrary, two dis true disciples are indeed called to take risks and venture beyond the known and the secure. My question then is, are we ready to take a chance on the Lord? Are we ready to take the risks that are necessary to be true disciples? Are we prepared, O oh Lord, with your help to conquer and overcome our fear of failure? No, let us, confident, trusting in the Lord, let us take every opportunity we have. Let us risk all that we are in following him for he will chart our course. And in the end, we will hear those words, good and faithful servant, come enjoy your master's joy. Let all God's children say amen. amen.
Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grateful. For all the gifts we have been given, we ask for help that we need to serve God faithfully as we offer him these prayers. For the church that as the body of Christ in the world, we may proclaim and live out God's justice and compassion, we pray to the Lord. For all elected officials in government, May their leadership bring peace to our world and justice to all those in need, we pray to the Lord. For those enduring trials and challenges in life, may they come to know the loving presence of God and the support and compassion of this community, we pray to the Lord. For all who suffer, may our prayers bring them healing and strength especially those mentioned at the beginning of Mass, the intentions in our parish intercessory prayer book, and those called into our prayer chain, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, may the Lord's mercy grant them eternal rest, especially for Ursula Dougherty being remembered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. And now for each of our own intentions that we make in a moment of silence. For these we pray to the Lord. God of all good gifts, we know you are with us as we answer your call to act boldly in your service. Hear the prayers we offer today, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the men and women who serve the church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy especially Ursula, being remembered at this Mass. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. First of all, this Tuesday evening, we will be having uh, arriving here at our church, I think the only stop in Delaware, will be the Silver Rose, which travels through Canada and the United States, through Mexico, to the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. It is a prayer circle or a prayer journey that also prays for life as the roses that Our Lady of Guadalupe poured forth as a miracle when she placed the image of herself on the tilma. So these roses all represent a life. So the silver rose travels and will be brought here on Tuesday night, 5.30. Uh, we'll have a brief service in English, uh, probably about 20 minutes. And then afterwards, after everyone leaves later on, there will be a, another service in Spanish before the rose moves on to its next destination in Maryland. Also, uh, the Christopher Council will be handing out all of the warm winter coats that they have collected for children. Uh, and that will happen on Sunday, November 22nd at our church hall downstairs with social distancing in lining up and of course all the other protocols that go with the COVID-19. There's multiple sizes available from toddlers to teens. Um, so if you know anybody that needs a coat, please ask them to come. It will be on Sunday the 22nd, and I'm trying to see here. It doesn't give the time. So uh, there are in the bulletin instructions to people you can contact by email or phone. Please do that. Uh, our Money Mania will be starting soon. Remember, it's going to be those who wish to have their favorite numbers first. So start writing down those numbers and get ready to request them. Our Mass of Remembrance is at the end of the month for all those who have died and are in our Book of Life, and that will be on the 28th at the 4.30 Mass. Uh, the Claymont Fire Prevention Team will be collecting food for our food closet at the uh, Acme at Bramar Plaza uh, tomorrow. So if anybody wants, is going there between 9 and 1, you can give your contribution there. Uh, Thanksgiving Mass will not be at 9, it will be at 9.30, 9.30 on Thanksgiving Day. And also, so everybody knows, uh, we are in the midst of collecting food for our Thanksgiving basket giveaway. All of those things are online and in the bulletin that we need. So if you're able to give and contribute, we will be helping families to celebrate their Thanksgiving together. I'd now like to invite those who are celebrating a special occasion, a birthday. I think we had some birthdays and we had some other things. Please stand so we can sing to you our song of celebration. I think what's over there. Pluribus annos, pluribus. Pluribus annos, pluribus. Pluribus Anos prospero. Let us all stand together. Remember, when you leave, stay six foot apart as you're going out all the exits of the church. And also, please know, and you can see, that the virus is beginning to spread more rapidly and more completely in our country and we must be more vigilant and more careful so please make sure that you obey all of those warnings that are given by the CDC and here in church and if anything changes in our situation I will let you know we'll contact you by phone or email or on our web pages and Facebook page and every opportunity we have so 
Let's be safe and pray for one another. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.